Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to do a walkthrough on how I do a Dutch pour, including uh, mixing all of my paints. For my pouring medium, I use Floetrol. I have my paints. I'm going to be using some of my favorite colors. I have magenta, turquoise, yellow, and orange. And then I have some white paint for my base coat. I also have some cups to mix up my paint and some stir sticks, my hair dryer, and then of course my canvas. So these are all of the supplies that I'll be using. So I have four cups to uh, mix my paint and then I have four cups that I can use to um, rest underneath my canvas so that the excess paint will um, come off of my canvas and the, the canvas won't be resting in the paint while it's drying. And then I have a slightly larger cup for my base coat, so I'll mix up a little bit more white than I do with each of my other colors. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint into each of my cups. Um, these are, I believe they're three ounce cups, so they're really small. Um, I'm probably putting just about a tablespoon of paint in there. You don't need that much, especially when you're using um, such a small canvas. And for my paints, I'm using a variety of different brands. Uh, my magenta is Galleria, Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylic. My orange and my turquoise are Chroma paints. And then my yellow and my white are Joe Sonia paints. So I use a lot of different brands. I really like the Chroma and the Joe Sonia paints and I actually get them online at Dick Blick's. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more white, probably putting about an ounce of paint in my cup because obviously I need a little bit more for my background than I do for the colors. So before using the Floetrol, I'm going to shake it up. Some people find that this can get lumpy, so they'll actually strain it before they use it. Uh, I just try and catch, if I see any lumps coming out, I just try and catch those or remove them from the paint before I um, actually do my pour. And I use about, um, probably about twice as much pouring medium or Floetrol as I do my paint. So if I have an ounce of paint, I try and look at probably about two ounces of Floetrol. And then again, if I'm only using a tablespoon of paint, I'll just put in a little bit more Floetrol. Oh, and there is a lump right there. So I'm going to just remove that, set it off to the side. And to cover my table, I um, this white sheet that I'm on is just freezer paper. Uh, it works really well to um, dry paint on. So if you want to save your leftover paints, if you pour them on the shiny side of the paper, um, once the paint is dry, it'll peel right off. So that's called an acrylic skin and you can use that for other projects. I do jewelry and bookmarks with the acrylic skins, so that's how I save my leftover paint. And before I start adding my water, I mix together the paint and the Floetrol just to see the consistency and then start determining how much water I'm going to be adding. And my turquoise got a little lumpy, but just stirring it for a little bit, I got those lumps out. So some of the paints can uh, take a little bit more stirring to uh, mix out any of the lumps that you may get. My orange, um, it got really lumpy for a minute when I first started incorporating that Floetrol with the paint. So if you just keep on mixing most of the time, you can mix those lumps right out and get a really nice smooth consistency. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start adding a small amount of water to each of these. Um, I add a really small amount at a time, probably just a couple of um, teaspoons and then stir that in and then continue to incorporate water until it's the consistency that I want for pouring. 
Um, I don't like adding too much water all at once because if you thin your paints down too much, it can get a little difficult um, thickening it back up. Um, sometimes you can use some glue or you can add more of your pouring medium or paint. But then you start mixing up larger quantities if you keep adding pouring medium and paint to your mixture to try and get it thicker. So just a really small amount and then so we're starting to get a really nice stream right off of our stick. And that one's pretty good now too. And just get that really nice stream off of your stick. So I added a little bit more uh, water to my white paint since I was using more paint. Um, but again, just have that really nice, smooth consistency off of the stick. So hopefully my hair dryer moves everything really well. Okay, so now that I have my paint mixed up, I'm just going to prop my canvas up on my cups. And one of the things that I like to do beforehand is just tape off the back. Uh, this helps keep it a little bit cleaner. And then if you finish it with resin, um, the tape helps get the dried resin off the back a little bit easier. Um, even if you have some larger resin chunks, you may still need to use a Dremel to get it off. Uh, but trying to do it by hand is really, really hard. So I just tape it, keeps it nice and clean, and then you can just peel the tape right off when you're all done. So my hair dryer, I just got this one off of Amazon. Uh, it, there's a low and a high setting and an off button. So there's no option for hot or cold. Uh, the low setting is cooler and if you turn it to the hot setting, it does get very warm. So I use it on the low setting. Um, I don't want it to get too hot or else it'll start drying my paint and you know a portion of my paint may start drying quicker than the rest of my uh, paint on my surface and that's when you can start getting cracking. So if your top layer is drying really quickly but your bottom um, underneath it is still really wet, it'll start to crack. Um, so low setting works well for me. So doing the base coat really helps because it helps the rest of your paints uh, move well across the canvas. We can start adding our colors. One of my very first Dutch pours that I did, um, I don't remember what video it was, I think it was in the 300s, it was quite a while ago. I did these colors and the blue and the pink blend to have a really nice, um, almost purple color. And then the orange and the yellow also blended with the magenta and they all looked really nice together. So I'm just gonna try and do something similar to what I did before. And I remember doing, like pooling my blue and pink together. And then I did the orange and the yellow. So I'll be doing another video with these because I still have a ton of paints left over. And then part of the Dutch pour is you add a little bit more of your white paint, you blow the white paint back over the colors, and then you blow it all out with um, your hair dryer. So we'll see what this looks like. Hopefully it won't be too muddy. Okay, so I'm gonna blow out a little bit more here. All right, and then I'm going to leave it. Um, so I do have some small cells forming. You could probably thin the paint down a little bit more and get more cells, but I do like the way that this looks. Um, I really like the way that these colors blend together. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this as is. We'll let it dry and see what it looks like. 
I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button. And um, don't forget to subscribe. I do put out three videos a week. So I hope to see you in the next one. And thank you so much for watching today.